Hello everyone. I hope I am live. You can see me. You can hear me. Let me confirm. If I am clearly visible, audible, I will start the lecture ahead. You have to give me a minute to see if I am live or not. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Yeah, I hope it is working. Please give me a thumbs up in the chat box if you can clearly see me. Okay. Okay. So I am starting. Okay. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sajdev here, educator on an academy. And today I am here to take a very important topic from pathology that is hepatitis. Now hepatitis is really a very difficult topic and important topic per se for all competitive exams. Whether you are targeting your university exam, second prof, or you are targeting NEET, PG, FMG, INICT or next. Hepatitis is such a topic you cannot skip anywhere. So you have to understand this topic in detail. Now I will tell you the various serological markers of all type of hepatitis, acute, chronic, everything and the histology of acute, chronic, fulminant histopathology also. So we will study the topic completely in depth. So I have divided the topic in two portions, right? So we will cover the topic in two portions. Okay, so today is episode one. But I cannot jump directly on hepatitis. Before understanding what is hepatitis, you should understand. You should understand the normal histology of the liver. So in the first 5 to 10 minutes of this lecture, I will teach you the normal histology of the liver. What is the lobular model? What is portal triad? If you can understand these terminologies, understanding hepatitis will be fun for you. Believe me. Believe me. So give me 5 to 10 minutes. We will understand first what is liver. In liver, all these topics are important. I am going to take lectures on all these topics one by one. So today is the lecture on hepatitis. But for understanding all these topics, you should understand the normal histology, the lobular model, the portal triad in the liver. So let me start with that. Are you people there? Should I start? We know liver is the largest organ in human body. Largest organ in human body is the liver. Liver is having two lobes. This is the right lobe of the liver. This is the left lobe of the liver. You can see right lobe is six times larger than the left lobe. You can see here. Now tell me the name of the ligament which separates the right lobe from the left lobe. Right, right lobe is six times larger than the left lobe. It is clearly visible here. Does anyone know the name of the ligament which separates the right lobe and the left lobe? Does anyone know the name of the ligament? The name of the ligament which is? There in the right and the left lobe. Yes or no? Does anyone know? What is the name of the ligament which separate right and the left lobe? So, please write down if you know. So, there are three answers. Three answers. So, anteriorly they are separated by a ligament known as falciparum ligament. Posteriorly they are separated by a ligament known as ligamentum venosum. And inferiorly they are separated by a ligament ligamentum teres. So, same right lobe and left lobe. If you talk about anteriorly they are separated by a ligament. The name of the ligament is falciform ligament. And posteriorly the same ligament. The same ligament is known as ligamentum venosum. And inferiorly the same ligament is known as ligamentum teres. So please understand it. So in your exam, if question is coming like this, if question is coming like this, that is name the ligament which separate the right and the left lobe of the liver. Now read the question completely. Whether examiner is asking anteriorly or whether his examiner is asking posteriorly or whether the examiner is asking inferiorly. You have two, diff three different options and all will be in your options A, B, C, D. So anteriorly, the name, what is the name anteriorly? You tell me it is it is falciform ligament. Posteriorly, ligamentum venosum and inferiorly, ligamentum teres. So, all you will get in your answers, in your options. So, you have to be accurate. If nothing is mentioned, go with falciform ligament. Consider it is standard anteriorly. If it is mentioned anteriorly, posteriorly, inferiorly, go with particular that ligament. Give me a thumbs up on every point. Everyone, give me a thumbs up on every point, please. So, should we go ahead? Should we go ahead? Okay. So, the liver is covered by a capsule known as glisson capsule. The liver is covered by a capsule known as glisson. So, this is the glisson capsule covering the entire liver. So, glisson capsule may be MCQ here. Now, you should understand the dual blood supply. You should understand the dual blood supply of the uh, liver. Uh, without which, you cannot go ahead. Dual, what do you mean by you? If you want to understand what is portal triad, you should understand dual. Now, liver has dual blood supply. But what do you mean by it? Can you see this image? No, please, everyone see this image. Can you see a heart in this image? See, this is the heart. Can you see? This is the heart. Now, see the left side of the heart. So, this is left auricle. This is left ventricle. From left ventricle, aorta is coming. You know, aorta carries pure blood and it supplies pure blood to all organs in the body. From head to toe, all organs receive pure blood from aorta. 
so aorta is of course giving blood to liver also so liver is receiving pure blood from a artery from aorta which is known as hepatic artery so this is the first supply out of the dual supply this is the first supply so hepatic artery supplies pure blood to the liver coming from aorta this is the first supply now can you see git here okay see this is esophagus see this is stomach these are the small and large intestines see the entire git so git se nikal rahi hai veins these are the veins coming out of the git so these veins drain in a vein known as portal vein and portal vein carries this blood to the liver so second blood supply is impure blood from the git it is impure blood it is the venous blood coming from the git venous blood right and it is entering the liver via portal vein so the second blood supply is the portal vein so dual blood supply of the liver is hepatic artery and portal vein one is hepatic artery coming from aorta it carries pure blood one is portal vein it is coming from the veins of the git it carries impure blood everyone give me a thumbs up everyone means everyone everyone means everyone so blood is coming from here the impure blood blood is coming from here the pure blood all the blood get accumulated inside the liver and exit out of the liver via common common exit so what is the common exit by which both bloods coming and exit the liver so all all the blood go out of the liver via hepatic vein all organs have vein na so liver also have a vein the name of the vein in the liver is hepatic vein it is also known as central vein why it is known as central vein i will tell you ahead in lobular model it is present in the center of the lobule so hepatic vein and central vein is one and the same thing and all veins go where the veins of from head to toe all organs go where they go in svc or ivc superior inferior vena cava via which they go in the right side of the heart the carrying the impure blood to the right side of the heart and from there the blood will go to the lungs for purification you know the cycle so hepatic vein is the common exit so liver let me summarize liver have dual blood supply blood is coming via two routes one pure blood via hepatic artery from the aorta one impure blood via portal vein from the veins of the git so the two bloods are accumulating in the liver and exit the liver via a common exit the name of the common exit is hepatic vein right that is known as central vein and that will go in svc ivc and drain in the right side of the heart if you have any slightest doubt please ask do you understand this okay if you got this now what is the function of the liver liver is made up of hepatocytes let me draw few hepatocytes here these are the hepatocytes all hepatocytes synthesize bile inside them right so all the bile formed here by all the hepatocytes is collected is collected and all the bile come out of the liver by a by a duct known as bile duct bile duct do not carry blood neither pure nor impure it carries bile which is synthesized inside the hepatocytes of the liver so bile exit out of the liver in bile duct and go in the duodenum the first part of the duodenum it enters the first part of the du duodenum via ampule of waiter you know so this is the bile duct coming out of the liver give me a thumbs up now this is the final diagram everyone see the final diagram so there are two blood entries what are the two blood entries one is hepatic artery carrying pure blood from aorta one is portal vein carrying impure blood from the git veins these are the two blood entries blood exit is only one that is hepatic vein or central vein so both blood are coming combining and exit via hepatic vein and central vein and go to the right side of the heart via inferior vena cava one is bile exit not blood blood nahi bile exit that is known as bile duct so bile come out of the liver and go to the duodenum via this if you have any slightest slightest doubt please ask otherwise let me move to the lobular if you have understood this now there are four things now out of these four things three will constitute the portal triad what are those three which constitute the portal triad let me summarize it is hepatic artery it is portal vein and it is bile duct can you see it is not hepatic vein i am not taking the, the two dual blood supply i am taking what is the dual blood supply hepatic artery the pure blood and portal vein the impure blood both at both inlets i am taking and along with it i am taking the bile duct i am not taking the vein i am not taking the hepatic vein these three things enter and exit the liver these two are entering hepatic artery will enter portal vein will enter but bile duct will exit so hepatic artery portal vein and bile duct they enter via a common opening that is known as hilum hilum that is known as hilum of the liver give me a thumbs up if you got the meaning of the hilum so hilum is a point from which hepatic artery is entering portal vein is entering and bile duct is coming out so these two are entering inside the liver and bile duct is coming out of the liver but from a common point that common point is known as hilum now please understand that these three are the best friends 
these are the tripod they always move together these are the best friends they are not never separated they are entering and exiting at a common point so they are they are together they are together artery vein portal duct uh, bile duct they are entering together not only this after entering inside the liver they are they are their branches also carry uh, travel together so it is always a triplet always a triplet you cannot separate them they are they run in the form of the triplet they run in the form of the tripod which three structures i am talking name the three structures hepatic artery carrying pure blood to the liver from heart portal vein carrying impure blood to the liver from git vein and bile duct bile duct these three are the best friends so these three will consider portal triad these are the triplet these are the tripod so that is portal triad can you see the three together the three together the three together the three they are branches so one is the branch of hepatic artery one is the branch of portal vein one is the branch of bile duct everywhere everywhere so their branches also best friends they are never separated they never fight with each other they are best friends you can learn like that so this is the diagram of portal triad it contains three things two arteries one bile duct right uh, two blood inlets and one is bile so hepatic artery this is the first blood supply in the liver having pure blood this is portal vein this is the second dual blood supply of the liver carrying impure blood from the git and bile duct tube right so this is known as portal triad i want thumbs up from everyone then only i will move to the lobular model after that i will move on his histol uh, hepatitis you will understand it very clearly if you know the lobular model let me see if i can see your chat yes i can see your chat now i want thumbs up from everyone first then only i will move ahead give me a thumbs up those who are watching it live usi mein maza hai if you are watching it live let it be live it is not a recorded lecture so you can interact with me by the way let me announce just after this lecture i will take this lecture till 12:55 pm for the 55 minutes i will take this lecture and just after 5 minutes break at 1 pm sharp i am launching a open house the link is given in the chat in the chat go in the chat above you can see there is a pinned link of the open house what is open house open house first time also first time i am taking it is a audio room you can talk to me in this open house if you want to get connected with me and talk to me directly i can i can speak now and you can hear me but if you are speaking i cannot hear you so if you want me to talk and connect like a phone call directly you can do that in open house so at 1 pm for the next 10 or 15 minutes only we are having this session that is a doubt solving session of this lecture so please listen the lecture complete lecture of this hepatitis very carefully if you have a slighted slightest doubt don't write in the chat box talk me directly ask me directly via audio call so we all will get connected on open house at 1 pm today whosoever is attending me live will join it so the link is already there in the pinned message you can go in the chat box you can see that there is a link if you can't find it kindly let me know right so just click on the link and you will get it joined copy that link and click on on that list so we all connected like a classroom we can talk to each other like a classroom we cannot see each other it is a audio room not a video room it is a audio podcast room so we all connect with each other on a audio room so let's see how it is going and we will talk with each other okay that that was an announcement okay let me move ahead after this uh let me tell you the lobular model of the liver okay so can you see this liver see this liver if i cut this liver and make a slide of it make a slide of it this is the slide of the liver entire liver is made up of lobules the hexagonal lobules what do you mean by hexagon so this is a hexagonal lobule having six corners so all the throughout the liver liver is made up of multiple hexagons multiple hexagons in this way you have to understand this hexagonal lobule right you have to understand it is like this right everywhere it is like it is never ending it is like this so it is a hexagonal lobule you have to what is the center of at, at each lobule the center of each lobule have hepatic vein which was not a part of portal triad hepatic vein is not a part of portal triad hepatic vein that's why known as central vein because it is present at the center of the lobule i have told you very clearly that hepatic vein and central vein yes yes uh, the shoe hepatic vein and central vein is at, uh, at is the same thing so hepatic vein is present at the center what is present at the periphery of each of them what is present at the periphery you have portal triad i am drawing only in one of them but consider it is present in all it is present in all i i can't draw in all so there are six portal triads in each portal triad there is one hepatic artery so this is the hepatic artery in each of them there is one um, there is one uh, let me draw uh, portal vein so this is the portal vein in each of them okay and there is one bile duct in each of them so this is the bile duct in each of them everyone give me a big thumbs up if you got this concept so this is the 
lobular model. So consider lobular model as a hexagonal lobules. So these are the hexagonal multiple lobules. You can see a lobular model here. At the center, you can see hepatic vein or central vein. At the periphery, see the portal triads. Portal triads contain one branch of hepatic artery, branch of portal vein, branch of bile tract. So that is the portal triad. You are not giving the thumbs up. So you tell me, this is the liver. Everyone see the liver. You know what I have taught you. This is the liver. Inside liver, total four things are there. Two are entering the dual blood supply and two are exiting. One is hepatic vein, one is bile duct. So two entries are there, two exits are there. Out of the four things which is present at this, so this liver is divided into lobule. So let me draw a few lobules inside. So these are the, okay, let me use an eraser. Okay, let me draw few lobules here. How I will get back, okay. So these are the lobules. These are the lobules, right? In the center of the lobule, what is present? Who will tell me? Who will tell me? So, the central vein is present at the center of each lobule. A branch from central vein. Everyone tell, give me a thumbs up. And at the periphery, there is portal triad. At the periphery of each of them, there are multiple portal triads containing three structures. What are the three structures? A branch of hepatic artery, a branch of portal vein and branch of bile duct. So, branch of these, these, these are present at the periphery. So, I am trying hard to give you an overview of what is actually happening. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got it? You got it? So, a classical lobule, center me central vein and at the periphery you have portal triads. Okay? Now, things will become more complex. Okay. So, this is a sketch diagram I have drawn for you. Can you see the sketch diagram? Can everyone see the sketch diagram? Say yes or no. Can you see there is a central vein at the central? Can you see the six portal triads containing one hepatic artery, one portal? The red is the hepatic artery. The blue is the portal vein and the green is the bile duct. So, I am using this color coding. Okay. This central vein is connected with the portal triad by a cord of hepatocytes. Can you see yellow color cells? Everyone, can you see the yellow color cells? These are the cords of hepatocytes connecting, connecting the central vein from the center to the peripheral portal triads. So, please, this arrangement is known as trabecular. What do you mean by trabecular? Trabecular is like a train. What do you mean by train? Have you seen a train? Have you traveled in a train? Of course, we all have traveled in the train some, some, uh, somewhat uh, 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 time, right? So, in train, we have bogies. Bogies one behind the other. Bogies. So, the hepatocytes are arranged like bogies. Bogies one behind the other. This arrangement is known as trabecular arrangement. Trabecular. So, it is not the sheet. It is one behind the other. So, this is one train. This is second train. This is third train. So, it is like this. So, first trabeculi, second trabeculi, third trabeculi, please understand it. Now, between two adjacent trains or between two adjacent trabeculi, there is a blood capillary which is known as sinusoid. Let me draw it here for you. You will understand. So, between these two, there is, there is one capillary here, one capillary here. So, this capillary is known as sinusoid and it is lined by endothelial cells. This is lined by endothelial cells. So, see this. So, I have drawn the two sinusoids for you. So, between this and this trabeculi, there is one sinusoid and between this and this trabeculi, there is one sinusoid. Please understand it very carefully. Give me a thumbs up. Sinusoids are lined by endothelial cells with scattered Kupfer cell. Ikka dukka. What are these capillaries? Okay, ye capillaries kya hai? Sinusoids kaha se hai? You should ask ma'am, yaha pe kaha hai sinusoids? Okay, you tell me artery kaha mein divide hota hai. Artery divide in capillary, you know it. You have studied na, artery divide in capillary. Capillary bind together and form a vein. So, this is this is artery, this is capillary, this is vein. We know it. Yes or no? We know it or not? Do not know it. So, this is the artery. This will divide in capillaries. These are the capillaries. And capillary will bind together and form the central vein. Right? So, these capillaries are the sinusoids which are going between two adjacent hepatocyte cords. Everyone give me a thumbs up. These are the sinusoids. Sinusoids are lined one by uh, endothelial cell and one by Kupfer cells. Scattered are the Kupfer cells. See here, purple color Kupfer cells. I have drawn only two, three Kupfer cells. Okay, let me draw this, this diagram in a different way. Should I draw it here? Okay, I will draw it here only. Uh, okay, uh, yellow color, will it be visible? No, it will not be visible. Okay, so this is one cord of hepatocyte. This is one cord of hepatocyte. This is another cord of hepatocyte. Everyone give me a thumbs up. This is another cord of hepatocyte. So, I am drawing this and this two cords like in this way. Right. Between two of them, can I draw a sinusoid? This is a sinusoid between two of them. It is lined by endothelial cell. It is lined by endothelial cell and scattered Kupfer cell. Ikka dukka scattered Kupfer cell I will also draw. So, this is one. This is two. Only one, two, three Kupfer cells are there. So, Kupfer cells are the macrophages. So, capillaries or sinusoids are lined continuously by endothelial cells and in between 1, 2, 3, 4 Kupfer cells or macrophages are present. Do you have any doubt till now? 
do you have any doubt till now no you don't have any doubt now please uh, have you traveled in a train i have asked this question previously also in train you know the bogies are connected from uh, each other from inside in a uh, broad line we have this feature so you can go you can travel from one bogie to another by a small connection between them so here also we have this connection the two hepatocytes have a pore between them so the two hepatocytes are connected with each other this is known as bile canaliculi the connection between two adjacent bogies you have to understand all these liver is the most complicated organ in the entire human body without that you cannot move directly on the hepatitis ar come on give me a thumbs up so that is known as bile canaliculi there are some diseases in which this bile canaliculi get obstructed so why these bile canaliculi can you see this green color i have drawn in the main diagram please appreciate this green color structures i am drawing in the main diagram these are bile canaliculi why god has given these bile canaliculi why do you know the relevance of each of them i have told you all these cells synthesize bile inside them let me draw the bile so this one is synthesizing bile this one this one so bile from the first will travel to the second second will travel to the third third will travel to the fourth fourth likewise all the bile will be collected here in the bile duct here in the bile duct and all the bile duct the green bile duct everywhere will join together and form a common bile duct common bile duct that will go in the duodenum carrying all the bile so bile synthesized in one cell will go to the next cell via this bile canaliculi that is the bridge between two bogie in some diseases this bridge is obstructed what will happen in that scenario the hepatocyte will synthesize the bile but it cannot move to the next cell because the you know uh, the, uh, the 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 path between the two bogies is obstructed the path between the two bogies so you cannot move from one bogie to another so all the bile will get accumulated and the hepatocyte will burst hepatocyte will burst so that is known as bile injury it will cause cirrhosis biliary cirrhosis so there are many diseases i will explain you in future so you have to understand the anatomy first histology first before moving to the diseases you cannot learn diseases before without understanding histology and physiology and anatomy give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it let me move ahead to the space of this you got what are sinusoids so the same diagram the author has also given the same diagram you can see this is one row of hepatocyte one bogie another bogie third bogie so these are the bogies see the connection between the bogies so these are the connections between the bogies known as bile canaliculi right now here is another uh, train is present it is not drawn here let me draw the train for you okay so there is another you can consider here is another train is there and between two there is sinusoid so here is the sinusoid drawn for you it is lined by endothelial cells these are the endothelial cells you can see white colored cells and one of them is cooper cell do you have any doubt till now if you don't have any doubt till now i would like to draw this diagram again one more finally i would like to draw it for you one one thing i have to tell you here which i forgot to tell you so let me draw one bogey here one train here with multiple bogies let me draw one train here with multiple bogies these are two trabeculae these are the row of hepatocyte which are forming two trabeculae these are connected with each other by bile canaliculi right these are the bile canaliculi say yes or no between two adjacent adjacent trabeculi we have sinusoid so this is one of the sinusoid sinusoid is a blood capillary lined by endothelial cell so these are the endothelial cell with scattered kuffer cell so ye ikka dukka kuffer cell right now there is a space there is a space let me see if i can oh god the diagram is gone by mistake it is gone okay there is a space between the sinusoid there is a space between the sinusoid and the trabeculi that space is known as space of distance this space i am talking about this space okay i am talking about this space this space and this space this space is known as space of distance what it is known as say it is known as space of distance again a very important mcq space of distance space of distance contain a special cell few cells it is known as eto cells so eto cells are present in space of distance whenever the person have any hepatocyte injury anything causing injury to the hepatocyte just suppose alcoholic injury uh, hematochromatosis mein iron injury wilson's disease mein copper is the injurious agent sometimes these bile canaliculi are obstructed so bile will cause the injury and burst the hepatocyte so anything cause necrosis of these hepatocytes injury to the hepatocytes injury so that will stimulate the eto cell eto cell will get stimulated because of necrosis of the hepatocyte if these hepatocytes are causing injured or necrosis the eto cell will get stimulated eto cell after stimulation get converted into myofibroblast myofibroblast 
and start synthesizing collagen so e2 so cell is the source of collagen and collagen will cause fibrosis of the liver and that will lead to cirrhosis so ultimately this is the series of uh, cirrhosis everyone give me a big thumbs up everyone means everyone give me a thumbs up so that is the complete histology if you have understood it this is the final diagram of the liver you will say ma'am we are not getting it what it is okay so let me tell you one of the lobule this is one of the lobule you can understand right at the center there is a central vein and at the periphery there are six portal triads all of them contain one hepatic artery all of them contain one portal vein and all of them contain one bile duct yes or no so i cannot draw all six every time i will draw only one i will draw only one portal triad not six every time so what diagram i will draw for you every time not only in hepatitis hepatitis cirrhosis i will teach you everything about liver but i will draw this diagram one central vein one portal triad you have to consider six but i will draw one in my diagram so this is the diagram i will use every time so i am drawing one central vein and one of the portal triad not all six one of the portal triad containing three things which is artery which is vein you can see the smaller one is the artery <laughs> the thick wall is the artery you can see the, the 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 one which is having more lumen is the vein this is the vein and this is the bile duct you can see this is the bile duct so it is having triad hepatic artery portal vein and bile duct this is the triad this is portal triad and this is central vein and please appreciate the cord of hepatocytes connecting them these are the trabeculae these are the cords of hepatocyte connecting them now between two adjacent hepatocyte the sinusoid is not shown here but you have to consider there is a sinusoid lined by endothelial cell copper cell and the space between the sinusoid and hepatocyte this space is space of the say containing the e2 cell if everyone will give me a thumbs up then only i will proceed if you have any slightest doubt please ask so what naim is asking repeat injury of the cell okay naim if any of the cell is getting injured now there can be various injurious agent injurious agent can be alcohol causing alcoholic cirrhosis Injurious agent can be iron causing hematochromatosis. Injurious agent can be copper in Wilson's disease. Injurious agent can be bile in biliary duct cirrhosis. So injurious agent can be multiple. Whatever is the injurious agent causing necrosis of the hepatocyte, the eto cell in the space of the cell will get stimulated, will get converted into myofibroblast. It will start synthesizing collagen. Collagen will form fibrosis. The entire liver is fibrosed and causing cirrhosis. So that is the etiology of cirrhosis. I will take a separate lecture on cirrhosis. Don't worry. everyone don't worry so let me start the diseases now i'm not coming on the zones let me start with hepatitis are you people there let me see if i can see your chat i will start my topic today hepatitis and then we will do a open house discussion on hepatitis okay yeah i can see your chat so you have to give me a minute to skip this and move directly on the hepatitis so what is hepatitis leaving the zones yeah so here i am with hepatitis okay so what is hepatitis i am teaching you viral hepatitis i am teaching you hepatitis the viral hepatitis there are five type of hepatitis you have to understand what is the name it's very simple hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c hepatitis d and hepatitis t why they are named so with the alphabets a b c d e why have you ever thought why they are named so because each of them is caused by a virus it is not bacteria it is not parasite it is not fungus i am talking virus So there are five different viruses causing each of them. Hepatitis A virus (HAV) causes hepatitis A. Hepatitis B virus causes hepatitis B. Hepatitis C virus causes hepatitis C. Hepatitis D virus causes hepatitis D. And hepatitis E virus causes hepatitis E. I will teach you all five. Don't worry. I will teach you all five. Everything. The uh, uh, most difficult clinical questions also you will be able to solve once you will be able to understand the hepatitis. Everyone, give me a thumbs up. Don't learn their year of discovery. No, it's not important. but you have to learn the name of the five viruses now please understand out of the five viruses out of the five viruses only hepatitis b is a dna virus rest all are rna 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 it is a very important mcq so hepatitis b virus is a dna virus rest all viruses are rna virus so hepatitis a c d e r rna and b is dna have you got it have you got it if you have got it let me proceed ahead so there are five type of viruses a b c d e only b is dna rest all are rna we have understood that so five viruses causing five type of uh, hepatitis so you can see the five type of hepatitis you should know the family of each virus you know the classification of viruses in in microbiology the educator may have taught you the various classifications of so viruses are of two types dna viruses and rna viruses in dna viruses there are five five families 
you may know right so you may be knowing it so hepatitis a is the family belong is a virus belong belonging to picorna virus enterovirus 72 picorna virus hepatitis b is hepadena virus family c belongs to hepcivirus or flavivirus family d belongs to virioids family and e belongs to calcivirus or alpha virus family so you have to learn the family of the virus is bhi mcq aate hain please learn that learn that it is a rectification but you have to learn that there is no escape the third is the incubation period so if, if hepatitis a virus is entering human body it will cause hepatitis a a will cause a but after how many days after the entry so 15 to 45 days ke baad it will cause hepatitis b pe multiple time mcq aa chuka hai it will cause from 1 month to 6 month so hepat this is a human hepatitis b virus enters inside this human hepatitis b virus it will cause hepatitis b after 1 to 6 month so incubation period is so you have to learn the incubation period of all everyone give me a thumbs up everyone i will i will teach you all types of hepatitis don't worry but you have to make this table with me so please everyone take your notebook and start making this table with me hepatitis a b c d e start making this table with me once you have made this table now it the things will become super simple for you to understand there are five type of hepatitis caused by five type of viruses it is caused by hepatitis a virus hepatitis b virus hepatitis c virus hepatitis d virus hepatitis e virus okay only hepatitis b virus is dna virus rest all are rna viruses we have understood that also the third point which we have understood is the family of each virus i am not writing you know the family rna mein kaun si family it is picorna dna mein kaun si vary family it is hepadena so rna mein which family right it is it is hepsi family it is virioids it is kelsi so you have to name learn the name of the family you have to learn incubation period of each, each of them i am not writing but you have to learn the incubation period of each of them the next thing which i want to tell you here and want everyone to get understand this thing listen there are two things ek acute hepatitis ek chronic hepatitis the thing is that acute hepatitis can be caused by all 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 uh, hepatitis virus can cause acute hepatitis so hepatitis a virus b virus c d e acute hepatitis is caused by all of them do you have any doubt in understanding no all but what about chronic chronic hepatitis is caused by b c d b c and d a and e do not cause chronicity a and e please learn do not cause chronic hepatitis they can cause only acute acute can be caused by all the most severe form of acute is fulminant in which patient dies so of course acute caused by all so only 1% of acute will lead to fulminant so fulminant is also caused by all fulminant is nothing it is the most severe form of acute so acute and fulminant is caused by all fulminant is the most severe form of acute that why only 1% of the acute will lead in fulminant and death is the only um, thing there only fate there so fulminant and acute hepatitis is caused by all but what about chronic hepatitis what about chronic only bcd can cause chronic hepatitis a and e do not cause chronic hepatitis now please understand one more concept here very important chronicity leads to carrier stage chronicity leads to hcc hepatocellular carcinoma chronicity leads to cirrhosis cirrhosis so these all things carrier hcc and cirrhosis cirrhosis is also present only in bcd along with chronicity they are not present in a and e so none of the a carrier is there none of the e carrier is there a me hcc or cirrhosis ka there is no chance e me hcc or cirrhosis ka no chance but bcd in future as a complication can lead to hepatocellular carcinoma which is a malignancy of the liver come on patient is having simple infection by a virus the infection of the virus can lead to malignancy oh come on yes it can happen it can lead to cirrhosis yes it can happen as a complication give me a thumbs up so it is the bcd chronicity is bad we do not want chronicity chronicity is bad because chronicity will lead to carrier it will lead to hcc it will lead to cirrhosis but yes so if that is b c d can lead to all of these but a and e will e will cause only acute no chronicity give me a thumbs up if you got it now the next thing what is the route of entry in human body of all these viruses what is the route so a and e enters via feco oral route feco oral route b c d enters via three route it is not feco oral first is sexual number 1 second is blood products and needle stick injury blood products and needle that is known as parenteral and third is vertical vertical means from mother to baby via placenta okay i will draw it for you can you see the slide everyone now i will come on each hepatitis one by one a b c d e i will take it in sequence 
Are you people there? Can you see me? Can you see the slides? Everyone give me a thumbs up first. I will draw the roots for you. Let me teach you what is FICO oral root A or E. I am talking about FICO oral. So what is FICO oral? So let me draw a human being, a rough diagram of a human being. So this is a human being, right? So this human being HAV or HEV, A or E virus can enter via food and water. So this is contaminated food and contaminated water containing the virus. So the person will eat it. Person will drink and eat the food. So virus will go inside the GIT and from GIT it will reach the blood. It will be absorbed and go in the blood. So that is the oral route. Oral route's entry. The entry is the oral, right? The, the, this person will excrete the virus and feces. Excrete the virus and feces. So virus HAV and HEV is coming in the feces. Now these feces will contaminate another food and water. It will go and contaminate it another food and water and another person is eating and drinking the food contaminated by this person. So this is how it is entering from one person to another. It is not from person to person directly. It is how from one. So this is known as fico oral route. So coming in the feces of one person and entering the oral of other. So this is known as fico oral route. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So this is A and E. Hepatitis A and Hepatitis E follows this route of entry. Right. So it occurs from contaminated food and contaminated water. Contaminated food and water is the only source of entry in human body. What about BCD? A or E to ho gaya. Chalo. A, A and E is done. Give me a thumbs up everyone. What about BCD? Let me draw two humans here. So this is human 1 and this is human 2. Right, it is not fecal oral route. Right, now, number one is sexual intercourse between the two persons. Sexual intercourse between the two persons, it can be transmitted. I am talking about hepatitis B, hepatitis C and hepatitis D virus. Right, these virus can go sexually from this person to this person, number one route. Number two, they can go by parenteral route. But what do you mean by parenteral route? Parenteral route means what is If the blood products of this person is given blood transfusion is given to this person or if the needle i am using the needle in this person and i am not sterilizing the needle and same needle i am using in this so the needles and the blood products can cause this right that is parenteral root blood products and needle stick injury the third is the vertical vertical is not from one person to another just suppose she is a female ye wali female hai, and she is pregnant so inside the female this is the fetus in the uterus, this is the fetus of the female. So, it can go via placenta. The virus can go via placenta from mother to fetus. So, this route is vertical. Vertical is mother to fetus. Mother to fetus via placenta. Vertical. So, there are three routes. Sexual, parenteral and vertical for B, C, D. But for A and E, it is fecal oral. Have you got the route? So, fecal oral, fecal oral for A and E and sexual, perinatal and percutaneous. Vertical is perinatal. Is for B, C, D. Everyone give me a thumbs up. If you have got this, we can start the viruses individually, A, B, C, D, E. I will teach you in sequence. So, let me start with the first one, Hepatitis A. If you got an overview, let me start with the first one, Hepatitis A. I have already taught you that Hepatitis A is a RNA virus. All Hepatitis out of the five are RNA except Hepatitis B which is DNA. Give me a thumbs up. So, only Hepatitis B is a DNA virus. Rest all Hepatitis are RNA viruses. Very good. It is an RNA. You can learn it is single-stranded icosahedral unenveloped. Belong to Picorna family. It's maybe MCQ hai. Family also you know. So, this is the introduction you already know. The root, only one root, Pico oral. You already know the meaning of Pico oral. No need to tell you again. What do you mean by Pico oral root? You know it? Yes or no? Okay. The chat I cannot see right now. Yeah. I can see the chat now. Yes. So, it is a fecal oral route which is a predominant route of infection. Incubation period, it is 2 to 6 weeks, you can say. Right, okay. So, clinical features, it can cause only acute hepatitis. It cannot cause chronicity. It cannot cause carrier state. It cannot cause HCC. It cannot cause cirrhosis. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. It can cause only acute hepatitis, right? If it causes only acute hepatitis, rather it is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children. Okay, let me write it again. So, there are five hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. As I have told you, the acute is caused by all. So, acute hepatitis is caused by all. Acute, 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 right? But the chronic is caused only by BCD. Chronic, chronic, chronic. So, listen, A and E can cause only acute. So, A is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children and E is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in adults. No, you will never forget. These are important MCQs, right? BCD can cause acute also and chronic also. But chronicity, chronicity leads to three complications. Carrier state, cirrhosis 
and HCC. So carrier cirrhosis and HCC occurs in all these, but not in this, not in this. So let me summarize. Carrier state, chronicity, cirrhosis and HCC is present in BCD, but not in A and E. In A and E, only acute hepatitis is there. So A is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children and E is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in adults. Do you have any slightest doubt in this? Okay. If you don't have that, we move ahead. In SAPE MCQ, I get. In SAPE MCQ, I get. You can see spectrum. So it is, it is in children, it is causing 95% of the children will have subacute infection. Right. And only 10 to 20% will have joined us because of hepatitis A. Right. Complete recovery, 98%. Chronicity, none. Mortality is very rare. Out of 100, out of 1000, only one will die. That is the course in children. You can see the course in adults also. Adults may rare hota hai. Children may common hota hai. So that is the clinical spectrum. Okay. Just suppose there is a child in front of me. In my clinic, there is a child. Right. The child is having joined us. So parents are carrying. This is a child. Parents are carrying this child to me. I am a pediatrician just suppose. And this child is in my clinic. The parents are saying, what is the complaint of the child? The child is having yellowishness yellowishness of the sclera and yellowishness of the skin and child is loss of appetite is there child is not eating anything and there is a abdominal pain also these are the complaints the parents are saying my child is not eating anything from few days he is having a little bit abdominal pain also um, and the, there is yellowishness of the sclera and the jointers so they are suspecting the child is having jointers that's why they have carried their child, child to you now the most common cause of jointers in a child with this scenario so it can be hepatitis a which can occur by fecal oral route of course sexual route is not possible in children now so it is fecal oral route only hepatitis a and it, it is the most common cause of acute hepatitis so you are suspecting acute hepatitis a this is your diagnosis you are suspecting you are not sure you are suspecting your child is having acute hepatitis a hepatitis a is the most common cause of acute hepatitis in children and it is causing, it is the cause of jointus. Now, you have to understand jointus is a symptom. Jointus is not a disease. Many students have this confusion. They consider jointus per se as a disease. No, it is like a symptom like fever. Now, just suppose if my patient is having fever. Fever is a symptom. It is indicating some hidden disease. Now, fever can be due to COVID. It can be due to typhoid. It can be due to malaria. It can be due to anything, right? So, you have to rule out. It can be dengue. It can be typhoid. It can be malaria. It can be COVID. It has to be some disease. So, fever is indicating some disease. In the same way, jointus is also a symptom. It is indicating some disease. If the patient is having jointus, there is some problem with the liver. But what is the problem? You don't know. You have to find out that. So, parents ke liye, in layman language, they will say you doctor pilia, pilia ho gaya, bacche ko pilia ho gaya, that is joined us known as pilia, right? So, bacche ko pilia ho gaya. So, what is, it is not a disease, it is a symptom. You have to find out what is the problem with the liver. There is some problem with the liver, but what is the problem? So, if it is a child, most commonly it has to be acute hepatitis A. Give me a thumbs up, it is not chronic, it is acute. Hepatitis A causes only acute hepatitis. How you will be sure? What test you will order? How you will do the diagnosis? That is my question to you. How you will do the diagnosis? You will take a blood sample of this child. Blood sample. Inside the blood sample, if you are getting two things. Number one, HAV virus itself. And number two, antibodies against the virus. Antibodies. So your diagnosis is confirmed. Antibodies are of two types. IgM and IgG. If you are getting these three things in the blood of this child, your diagnosis is confirmed. Number one, HAV. Okay, the diagram is gone. Whatever I draw now, it just eliminate if I flip the slide. Okay, anyways, HAV virus not only present in the blood, it is present in feces also. That is how it is transmitted fecal oral route. So you can take, you can see HAV virus in the blood as well as in feces. So take a blood sample, look for HAV virus. Take a stool sample, look for HAV virus. Right, but antibodies are present only in blood, not in feces. So two type of antibodies, IgM and IgG. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So this is the graph. You can see the three things. Number one, First, virus is coming and then its antibody is coming. IgM is coming and going, the purple one. And IgG is coming and remaining forever. Forever it will be there. So, this is the serology of hepatitis A. This is known as serology. So, there is a child in front of me, the same scenario, having joined us. The child is having joined us. So, if I take a blood sample of this child in a test tube and if I take a stool sample of this child, this is blood of this child and this is stool of this child. The child is having joined us. My suspicion, clinical diagnosis, being a doctor, my clinical diagnosis is acute hepatitis A. Acute hepatitis A. So, I will take blood sample also, stool sample also. In stool, I will find hepatitis A virus. In the blood, I will find hepatitis A virus along with the two antibodies, IgM, IgG. I will give treatment to the child for hepatitis A. Whatever treatment, the, in the medicine, the faculty will teach you. The treatment will be given. 
uh, or self recovery is there after some time it is a self limiting self recovery is there uh, no treatment is required so the child is treated after some time the child is well so hiv will be gone hiv is gone from the stool also from via stool it is spreading to another 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 person that is fecal oral route hiv is gone in the blood and the stool and igm will also go but igg will remain forever forever so if you test the same child after few months or few years if you take the blood sample you will find only igg it indicates the past infection currently there is no infection but past means hepatitis a hua hai so igg will remain in the blood forever so now in your exam any exam neat pg fmg nicet 20 to 30% of the paper is image based ibqs yes or no so these graphs the serology graphs are a potent area from which image based question can be created imagine this graph is given to you with a clinical scenario there is a child having joint disc loss of appetite yellowishness of the skin sclera and this is the serology from the blood so label it so what is this what is this what is this so something which is coming first is the virus and something which are coming later are the antibodies. Now, antibodies are, are of two types. The one which is coming and going is IgM. And the one which is coming and remaining forever is IgG. So, labeling can be asked. Yes or no? So, it can be good MCQ, image-based MCQ can be created. So, this is the serology of hepatitis A. If you have any confusion, ask. Otherwise, let me start with hepatitis B. So, again, here, hepatitis A, the antibodies are shown. IgM is coming and going. IgG is coming and remaining forever. <laughs> Virus is not shown here. So this is early antibody, this is late antibody. Both are, read the name, HAV antibodies. One is IgM, one is IgG. I want concept from everyone. Now, hepatitis B is the most difficult hepatitis to get understand. But I will try my best. Let me see your chat. If you have any doubt, please ask it. I can see your chat in another gadget, not directly in the system. Just a second, it is hanging. Give me one second. It is hanging. Okay. Okay, okay, so here I am. So I can see your chat. So everyone, you have given the thumbs up, you don't have any doubt, right? If you have, please write down specifically, don't hesitate to ask your doubt. Let me start second hepatitis, hepatitis B, which is the most difficult out of the five, hepatitis B, hepatitis B. Now this, as I've told you, hepatitis B is the only hepatitis B virus, which is DNA virus, plus all our RNA. Give me a thumbs up, you, you know this. So this is the diagram of hepatitis B virus. This is HBV, hepatitis B virus. Can you see the double-stranded DNA? This is the DNA. This is the nucleus of the virus having the DNA. This is the capsid of the virus. And this is the envelope. This is the envelope and this is the capsid. So viruses have capsid, viruses have envelope, and viruses have nucleic acid. Nucleic acid, that is DNA or RNA. This is the structure of hepatitis B virus. Do you have any doubt in this? There are three antigens on the structure. The first antigen is known as hepatitis S. S antigen, S for surface. Surface. It is present on the surface. That's why hepatitis S. The second is E. E, E, E means envelope, envelope. It is present on the envelope. That's why known as hepatitis E antigen. The third is C. C. C means core. It is present inside in the core. That's why known as C the location. It is present in the core. That's why known as hepatitis C. So there are three antigens. Hepatitis S antigen, hepatitis E antigen and hepatitis C antigen. You have to understand this. There are three antigens present in the virus. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now imagine this virus is entering in a human blood vessel. This is the blood vessel either by sexual route or by parenteral route that is blood transfusion, needle stick injury or by vertical route from mother to child via placenta. So it is present in the blood vessel of a person. So these antigens will come and dissolve and come in the blood. So HBS will also come in the blood. HBE will also come in the blood. But HBC will never come in the blood. It will, because it is core, it is present inside, it will never come in the blood. And DNA will also come in the blood. Give me a thumbs up. HBS and HBE are present in the blood, but HBC will never found in the blood. If you take this blood in a test tube, if you take this blood in a test tube and test what antigens are present, you will find HBS, you will find HB, but you will not found HBC. So please understand the concept HBC never comes in the blood. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Now all these antigens will form antibodies. So HBS, everyone see here. Please everyone see here. It is difficult. Huh? I am saying again. HBS will form anti-HBS antibody. Okay. HBE will form anti-HB antibody in the blood. Body is forming antibodies against this antigen. So, HBS is coming in the blood, body is forming antibodies against it. HB is also coming in the blood, body is forming antibodies against it also. 
HBC do not come in the blood. Still body form antibodies against it. Human body forms antibodies against it. The entire virus is coming now. HBC not separately coming, dissolving in the blood. But yet it is present inside the virus. So body is forming antibodies against it. Anti-HBC antibodies which are of two types IgM, IgG. So here IgM, IgG is only of HBC which is not coming in the blood. The antigen not coming in the blood. HBS and HB also antibodies are formed but it is not two, two types IgM, IgG. It is only one type. Give me a thumbs up. So let me tell you the summary. What are the antigens and what are the antibodies which are present in the blood? Can someone enumerate? Please enumerate the antigens first. Only two antigens come in the blood. HBS antigen, HBE antigen. What are the antibodies which are coming in the blood? Four antibodies are coming in the blood. Anti HBS antibody. This antibody against this. Anti HBE antibody. Anti HBE antibody. Antibody against this. HBC is not coming in the blood. Still, its antibodies are there. The name is anti HBC antibody and it is of two types IgM and IgG. So, total four antibodies are there. Four antibodies plus two antigen, total six markers. So, I am having a list of six markers. Now, two things you have to understand. What is the sequence of arrival? Sequence of arrival of these six markers, the two antigen and four antibodies. What is the sequence in which they arrive? And what is the significance of each of them? What is the significance of each of them? Everyone give me a thumbs up, everyone. So this is the sequence. I cannot simplify than this. See, please everyone understand. So the first antigen which come in the blood is HBS antigen. As soon as the virus is entering, HBS will dissolve and come in the blood, right? After that, E will dissolve and come in the blood along with E, DNA will also dissolve and come in the blood. So E and DNA come together. So these are the antigens over. Only two antigens were there and they are coming in the blood. Now the it's time for antibody to be formed. Now body will form antibodies against all of these. So C is not coming in the blood now. So bura lag gaya ki main toh nahi ra. So body saying no don't worry I will form the antibodies against you very fast. So C ke against sabse pehle antibody banegi. So antibody is formed against C first. But it is of two types now. So IgM is forming. So C ke against antibody IgM is forming. Right. IgG will also form against C. But later on or un dono ke beech mein hai E. E. E and last may S. So S is the first antigen and last antibody. S is the E is the second antigen and second yaha pe S ki antibody. Hai. And these are the two. What is the sequence? So sequence is this. Among antigens, this is the sequence. And among antibodies, this is the sequence. Why I have so this is the sequence of I cannot simplify. Huh? Please understand. So S and E is the antigen. First S antigen is coming, then E antigen is coming. So H B S. HBE, please understand. These two antigens are coming. So, SE is the mnemonic, right? Among antibodies, these all are antibodies. Antibody, 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 antibody. So, these are anti HBS antibody. Anti HBS, anti HBS, anti HBS, anti HBS. So, what is the mnemonic here? What is the mnemonic? So, it is CECS. Why two times C? So, the first C is IgM. And the second C is IgG. I cannot simplify than this. So, what is the mnemonic final? SE for antigen and CECS is for antibody. So, S is the first antigen. Its antibody is last. Its antibody is last. SE, CECS. So, who will give me the thumbs up? What is the mnemonic for antigen? SE. What is the mnemonic for antibodies? CECS. So, CECS. Everyone give me a thumbs up. These are antigens, these are antibodies. There are two C. One is IgM, the first one. The second one is IgG. You are not giving the thumbs up means you didn't got it. Yes, you got it or you didn't got it. If you got it, please indicate that you got it. Give me a thumbs up. This is the sequence. Now you should know the significance for each of them. What is the significance for each of them? You have to understand the significance also. Okay. So, I will take the significance in the next lecture. So, in the next five minutes, if you have any doubt till now, you can ask. Okay, let me tell you the significance in, in a little bit detail. So, S indicates infection, antigen. It indicates infection. Whether acute or chronic, I don't know. Or carrier, I don't know. S means infection. And its antibody means recovery. Patient is having recovery or immunization, vaccination. So, they never occur together. In the blood, either you will get SK antigen or you will get SK antibody. Right? E, let me come on E. E indicates infectivity. Infection nahi. Infectivity. There is a difference between infection and infectivity. So E ka antigen indicates high infectivity. E ki antibody indicates low infectivity. Again, they never occur together. In the blood, either you will get E ka antigen or E ka antibody. It indicates patient is highly infective or low infective. That is the significance of E. S ka significance ho gaya, E ka ho gaya. C, C 
सी के ओनली एंटीबॉडी वी आर हैविंग एंटीजन नॉट हैविंग सो द टू एंटीबॉडी आईजीएम इंडिकेट्स एक्यूट और रिसेंट इन्फेक्शन एंड जी इंडिकेट्स क्रोनिसिटी सो वेदर इन्फेक्शन इज प्रेजेंट और नॉट प्रेजेंट इट इज इंडिकेटेड बाय एस का एंटीजन इफ इट इज प्रेजेंट इट इज ऑफ हाई इन्फेक्टिविटी और लो इन्फेक्टिविटी इट इज इंडिकेटेड बाय ई सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू लुक एस का एंटीजन है कि नहीं है इफ इट इज प्रेजेंट इन्फेक्शन इज देयर and antibody is present recovery is there if infection is present go with e e ka antigen present hai to high infectivity hai antibody hai to low infectivity hai then look for c if c ki igm antibody hai to it is acute or igg antibody hai to chronic so you will come to the final diagnosis everyone give me a thumbs up here i am ending this lecture but i am not ending the discussion is not yet occur on youtube i am ending but i am continuing it on a open house so the link is given in the chat you can read the link from the chat please find out the link if you are unable to find out let me know in the chat initially only it is given you can go upwards and see the link there so there is a link of open house please after 5 minutes click on that link and we will all from your mobile only you have to join so we we'll, all will be connected on a audio room so don't search for the video i will not be visible to you you can hear my voice only but i can also hear your voice so it is also first time for the me so we will understand what is the platform thank you very much for this lecture don't forget to write your feed box in the feedback in the comment box next class nahi next open house session we are having after 5 minutes so that is doubt doubt solving session if you have any doubts till now please ask me there please ask me there so thank you very much for being with me please give all india mock test which is going to happen on 26 february 9 am and uh, for those students who are dependent on the notes the hard copy is going to be launched soon on an academy stay tuned and please give the combat test which is going to happen on 19 feb you will get the uh, amazon gift vouchers if you are the winners so this that is on this subjects right and the last thing uh, if you take an academy plus or iconic subscription till 19 feb midnight instead of 10% discount you will get 20% discount on all subscription if you use my code such dev 10 So please understand the code. Learn the code such Dave Tan and apply it on all subscription. You will get twenty percent discount. Usually you get ten percent in plus also iconic also. But now we are giving twenty percent. So see how much you are saving. So please take the subscription if you are wishing to take it and apply my code such Dave Tan to get this benefit. Thank you very much and please join me on open house. Please click on the link, everyone. I am ending this and joining the open house. Bye bye.